Zor here from ZorGameGeek.com. Today I want to talk about alignment. Alignment in Dungeons and Dragons. I don't use it. I don't care about it. It is interesting as a philosophical debate, but what really, in 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons, what real use does it have at the table? With the bonds and flaws, the ideals and traits, options, and character creation for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons, you have all of the information you need or can generate or randomly generate to spec out your character's motivations. And you don't even need that. You can just figure out who is your character, what is it that they want, and what are they willing to do or not do to get what it is they want. That's all really alignment is. Now, back when Dungeons & Dragons was first created in the 1970s and, and into the 80s, first and second edition, alignment was very important. It said something very fundamental about your character to the point where certain types of magic, uh, protection against good and evil, uh, would detect good and evil, could detect your alignment as a character. It could detect who you are at your core, that that the this, not to go to it, into the philosophy of made-up magic within a made-up system, but just you're using the weave or magic emanations or whatever it is, and it is interacting with something within your soul that tells the caster who you are, this immutable trait. That doesn't make any sense. And in addition, first, the, the, the early versions of the game not only dealt with a, uh, alignment at that fundamental level, they had things like alignment languages that if you were lawful neutral, you could figure out who the other lawful neutral non-player characters were by going into the marketplace and just asking people questions, where's the bathroom, in the lawful neutral language. How does that make any sense? And frankly, it doesn't. So here we have 5th edition Dungeons and & Dragons, and they've kept the alignment system. They've kept the same alignment system that was started with first edition Dungeons and Dragons. And those are the nine spots on the grid. Lawful good, neutral good, chaotic good, lawful neutral, neutral, chaotic neutral, lawful evil, neutral evil, chaotic evil. So they're there. They're a statement. Um, there's a spot on your character sheet to fill it in. And in my game, I think I filled in, uh, I pre-generated these characters because my players had never played before uh, any role-playing games, let alone Dungeons & Dragons, before they started playing in my Lost Minds of Fandelver transition into Horde of the Dragon Queen and now Rise of Tiamat campaign. But I've never talked to them about it. I've never asked them to look at it. I've never really asked them to think about it. Even my paladin character uh, 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 doesn't, you know, player character doesn't, it doesn't really matter because their motivations are what their motivations are. They don't need this external label to tell them how their characters should act. They know how their characters act and they know their, their characters' choices. And it's my job to enforce the consequences of those choices within the game world upon those characters. So what's the point? Why is it there in 5th edition? It's there to appease the grognards, the uh, uh, neckbeards, the graybeards, and it's a little, it's getting a little there, uh, uh, who, who have this fondness for this edition that they first learned and, and grew up playing. To try to appease them to say, come with us, we are not ejecting the past. And, and it's important to contrast how 5th edition is doing alignment, it has done alignment, compared to 4th edition. Because if you remember from 4th edition, or maybe you don't because you didn't play it, they got rid of that grid. They, it's there, it's implied, but all they really cared about were the alignments w that were more likely to be heroic. Lawful good, lawful neutral, neutral good, chaotic good. Uh, I 
think they might have had chaotic neutral or but but they they might have just gotten rid of all that and they had this thing called unaligned where it's kind of like animals animals don't really they, they they do things for their own primal reasons and instincts um and so it just sort of got rid of it and that was okay but even then when i played fourth edition's dungeons and dragons we didn't really use it really we really didn't focus in on it because we played our characters we didn't play them to what the alignment said we should play them and and mechanically speaking the any any sort of carrot and stick in the system by fourth edition was long gone with with maybe the exception of a couple of magic items but the again in fifth edition it's there but it's like it's like your appendix it's what's its purpose what's it doing because the spells uh detect evil detect good protection from evil or good they don't talk about a character's alignment what they talk about are supernatural creatures because that's really what the point here is you're protecting yourself from angels you are protecting yourselves from demons. You're protecting yourselves from devils. These sort of supernatural, fundamental at their core representations of goodness and evilness. That is what you're protecting yourself against with these spells. And and there's gone are the experience point penalties if you don't play to your alignment or if you... Uh, are playing it slightly differently and your dungeon master wants to give you a gotcha and say, oh, you just changed alignment. You now have this huge, massive experience point penalty that you have to make up before you level. Those are gone. There there might be a few magic items, and I haven't really looked uh, uh, recently, that might limit themselves. You can only be attuned by an evil character or a good character. But in light of how the spells are working, that, that doesn't make any sense because then those spells would detect whether you're good or evil, not necessarily about at your fundamental core. So alignment, get rid of it. Don't use it. Ignore it. Ask your characters who they are, what they want to do, and how they want to do it and how they don't want to do it. That's what's important here. That's what the system is really trying to get at is to have your player players play their characters and not themselves. If you want to learn more about Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, go to zorgamegeek.com slash fifth. Again, that's zorgamegeek.com slash fifth. Keep gaming.